Only one video for this section, we're going to take a look at implicit differentiation. The first question is why implicit differentiation? So I have three functions here uh, to illustrate the need for the strategy of implicit differentiation. For my first function, I have y equals x cubed. This function is written in explicit form. It's explicit because y is isolated and everything else is on the opposite side. So this is an explicit function and it's very easy to find y prime here because I can just use the general power rule, 3x squared. Same thing for the second function. While it's not currently written in an explicit way, I can rewrite this as y equals one divided by x by dividing by x on each side. I can think about that as x to the negative one, so y prime would be negative one x to the negative two, or negative one over x squared. As you can see in my third and final equation, I have more than one y, and it wouldn't be very easy for me to isolate so that my function was written explicitly as y equals. So when we have a situation like this, we can use implicit differentiation implicit differentiation, which has a lot to do with the chain rule. Let's talk about how implicit differentiation works. So keep in mind, you only need to use this if you are unable to write your function explicitly using y as a function of x. So I'm using that exact same question from before. What are we going to do? We're going to just follow our steps. Our first step says differentiate both sides with respect to x. So what that means is if I'm differentiating something that has a y, I'm essentially using the chain rule. And we just learned about the chain rule. So 2y would be re rewritten as, think about what would happen if it was 2x. Well, the derivative would be 2. But now, what's the derivative of y? Well, I can either write it as dy over dx, or you can write it as y prime. So you kind of choose what's better for you. I usually use y prime because I'm a little bit lazier. And then we look at y squared. Now again, if this was x squared, you would tell me the derivative is 2x. So it's 2y. But now, what's the derivative of y? Again, that's just chain rule. Again, it's dy dx. What's the derivative of 3x? Well, this one's not tricky because it's an x. So if I'm dif differentiating 3x with respect to x, the derivative is 3, and the derivative of 14 is 0. So that's that first step. Differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to x. Second step, collect all terms that have dy over dx, or y prime, on one side of the equation. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 dy dx plus 2y dy dx equals negative 3. Now I'm going to factor the dy dx or y prime out of everything from this side. So I'm going to take dy dx and that leaves me with 2 plus 2y and finally, I'm going to solve, whoops, let me switch colors. I'm going to solve for dy dx or y prime. So how do I do that? I'm going to divide each side by 2 plus 2y. So in this case, dy over dx, or the derivative of y with respect to x, is negative 3 divided by 2 plus 2y. And no, I don't care if you factor out the 2 on the bottom. It's completely up to you. That's all of the steps. So differentiate both sides. If you're differentiating a y or anything other than x, you have to include the chain rule that says find the derivative of that, then collect all of those terms, factor them, and solve. So let's try just a couple of practice. Here's one for us to try. y cubed minus 4x cubed equals y. Again, why do I need implicit differentiation? Because I can't say y equals and have all of the y's to one side. So I'm going to differentiate 3y, and this time I'm going to use y prime, sorry, 3y squared 
that's just the power rule, and then chain rule says y prime. And then this one's an x, so I don't need to use with respect to x. I just say minus 12x squared. No extras on that one. And then y, the derivative of y is 1, and then because it's a y, it's y prime. Collect all of the y primes to one side. So 3y squared y prime minus y prime, whoops, minus y prime is equal to 12x squared. Factor the y prime out, so 3y squared minus 1 equals 12x squared. And then solve for y prime. 12x squared divided by 3y squared minus 1. That's my final solution. Here are two questions for you to try. Now, if you want to try these on your own, feel free. Uh, if you're not ready for that yet, we're just going to go through them together. So again, I'm going to start with the derivative of 3y squared, and I'm uh, differentiating with respect to x. So this is going to be 6y to the first, but then y prime. And then 2y becomes 2, but again, chain rule says y prime, or dy dx. And then the derivative of sine is cosine of x. Get everything to one side, so 6y y prime minus 2y prime is equal to cosine of x. Factor out that y prime, or dy dx, to give me 6y minus 2. And then divide to get y prime by itself, cosine of x divided by 6y minus 2. For the other one, same idea. The derivative of x cubed y, okay, this one's going to be a little bit harder because this is a product rule. Notice I've got x cubed and y being multiplied. So the derivative of the first term is the first times the derivative of the second, y, which would be 1, but y prime, plus the second times the derivative of the first, Same thing with my second term. Let's just change colors so we understand what's happening here. Now I've got the first times the derivative of the second, which is just 1, plus the second times the derivative of the first, which is 2y, y prime. And then that last term is equals 0. Now I've got to do a little bit of cleanup. So this is x cubed y prime, this is plus 3x squared y, this is plus y squared, this is plus 2xy y prime equals 0. I want to get all of the y primes to one side, so x cubed y prime and plus 2xy y prime Everything else is going to go to the other side, so minus 3x squared y minus y squared. And now I have to factor out y prime. So x cubed plus 2xy is equal to negative 3x squared y minus y prime. And then I divide, so y prime is equal to negative 3x squared y minus y prime divided by x cubed plus 2xy. We're going to finish with just one practice. We're going to find the derivative implicitly, and then we're going to find the slope of the tangent line and equation of the tangent line at a specific point. So all things that we've done before, but obviously this one's going to be a little bit trickier, only because we're dealing with a little bit of craziness in the point where we're finding the equation. So finding the derivative won't be too difficult. We know that we're going to find the derivative by using the power rule. So x squared plus 4y squared equals 4. Finding the derivative with respect to x means 2x plus, again, 8y, but then also y prime, or dy dx, equals 0. I'm going to get everything that has a y prime on one side, so 8y y prime, and everything that doesn't on the opposite side, 
and then factor out the y prime. So in this case, I'm really just dividing each side by 8y. So y prime is negative 2x divided by 8y, or reducing that a little bit more, negative x over 4y. So that is my derivative function. From here, now I'm going to find the slope. So the slope, oops, try to switch colors. The slope is y prime of radical 2, because that's the x value for which we're trying to find the slope. And so that tells me to take negative x, so negative radical 2, divided by 4 times y. Well, y is negative 1 over radical 2. So now I just need to clean that up a little bit. My numerator is negative radical 2. Um, but actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by a radical 2 on top and on bottom. So I'm actually going to end up with negative 2 in my numerator because negative radical 2 times radical 2 would be negative radical 4. Radical 4 is obviously 2. And then in my denominator, I did that so that I could get rid of that radical. So now I have negative 2 over negative 4. And then, of course, that reduces to 1 half. From here, I'm going to find the equation. So I'm going to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So again, x1, y1 are right here. So y minus negative 1 over radical 2, which means I could really just make that plus, is equal to 1 half x minus radical 2. So from here, I just need to clean it up. I've got y, I'm going to keep the plus 1, radi 1 over radical 2 on the left for just a moment while I clean up the right hand side. So on the right, I have 1 half x, or just x over 2, depending on how you want to write that. And then I've got minus radical 2 over 2. So from here, now I need to add the 1 over radical 2 to the right hand side. So really, I'm adding it here, which of course, I'm sorry, subtracting it, and that's going to make it go away. So then I'm going to subtract 1 over radical 2 here. Now keep in mind, in order to combine terms, they need to have a common denominator. So all I have to do is, let me figure out a color scheme here. This is minus radical 2 over 2, and then I'm going to take this times radical 2 and this times radical 2 to get minus radical 2 over 2. So what happens there is I've got y equals 1 half x, and then I'm subtracting radical 2 over 2 and radical 2 over 2, so I've got 2 radical 2 over 2, which means I actually have y equals 1 half x minus radical 2. So that is the equation of the tangent line at the point radical 2, negative 1 over radical 2. That's it for section 2.5. Now we're going to move on to 2.6 related rates.